welcome to this tutorial on a better way to make a shadow capture and composite a model into a HDRI backplane. I've set up a simple scene for this tutorial. It's just a sphere that I've given a simple metallic chrome material, a plane which currently has no material, and I have already set up my HDRI. This is a modified tutorial from that I first came across with from a person called VK Laidu. I assume that's how you pronounce his name. I'll link the original tutorial in the description. But if I switch to my camera view and go to rendered, you can see the problem that we have is the shadow of the ball is on the plane and the reflected shadow is on the ball, but we can see the entire plane and it's blocking the HDRI environment. The typical way to fix this is with the plane selected, go to Object Properties and click Shadow Capture. That hides it in the scene, but the problem is we can still see the reflected shadow plane. If we untick Glossy, we can no longer see it in the ball, but the problem is we no longer see the reflected shadow either, which is not ideal. So if I re-enable Glossy and untick Shadow Capture, with the plane selected, if you add a new material, delete the principal, and I'm going to add a diffuse shader. I'm then going to add an texture and environment texture. Plug that into the diffuse shader. Now for the environment texture, you want the same HDRI texture you're using as the background. I'm using Derelict Highway from Polyhaven. I'm also going to control T to add the texture coordinates. If you don't have Node Wrangler enabled, you can manually add the textual coordinates and mapping. So we need to change the textual coordinate to reflection and set the scale in the mapping for the Z to minus one. You can see now that the plane has a texture that perfectly maps to the HDRI environment. The problem is it's being also being lit by the HDRI environment and so is appearing lighter. The way to fix this is zoom in on the edge of the plane and in your material add color and RGB curve. I'm going to zoom in on this. Now you just need to simply make the plane darker so until it matches the HDRI environment. I'm going to go with there for this tutorial. Now if we look around, you can see that we have the shadow on the floor, we have the shadow reflected in the ball, and the ball perfectly reflects the HDR environment. Now we've set up the shadow plane correctly, we need to composite it all together to make a complete scene that gives us control over the model and the background independently. To do this, I'm going to use the compositor built into Blender. So I'm just going to go back to viewport shading and change over to the compositor. If you haven't already, you should tick use nodes and this is what you should see. For the scene with the model, we need to tick transparent because we don't want the background rendering in the scene. I'm also going to go up to the top and rename this to model as this will keep it easier to keep track of later. I'm then going to click new scene and make a full copy. This I'm going to call an environment. For this, we're gonna render a plain empty scene, just so we just get a plain HDRI backplate to use. The quickest way to do this is click on the camera, control I to select inverse, and then just delete everything out of the scene. Because we want the background to render for this, we can untick transparent. We also don't need that many samples because we're just rendering a plain effectively picture so there's nothing to render so we can change that down to 10. Then go back to model and again click on new and click full copy. This one I'm going to call alpha. For this scene you want to just delete the shadow plane and also make sure that transparent is ticked in this scene. We don't actually need the full render because all we'll be using out of this is the alpha channel. 
So if you go to Shader Editor and the World tab, we can delete everything out of that except the background of the strength one. I'm going to go back to my model tab. In layer properties, make sure ambient occlusion is ticked. And now we can get on with sorting out the compositor to render. So I'm going to go back to the compositor and I'm going to make it almost full screen. For this, we need to duplicate the render layers. So I'm going to duplicate it once and twice. The top, I'm going to set to environment. The middle, I'm going to set to alpha. And the bottom, I'm going to leave to model. At this point, I'm going to render it out so you, we can see what happens with the final render as I composite this all together. So now that's complete, I'm going to open the image editor. As you can see, with the environment texture selected, we just have an empty background. If I go down to the alpha, it's just a plain circle. But as I said, it's the alpha channel we use as this will separate the model from anything in the background. And the final model render we have is the actual sphere on top of the shadow plane. The first thing we want to do to bring this together is I'm going to move these far apart because we're going to need some room to work. Is I'm going to add an alpha over and drop it on this line. We need to plug the model layer into the bottom image and the environment into the top. As you can see, that pieces them together, so we have a full image now. Let's move this over because we're going to need some more room. I'm then going to add a mixed node and also drop that on this line. For this one, we're going to be combining the scene we just created of the full with the ambient occlusion. So with the image out of the alpha over in the top, we're going to plug the AO or ambient occlusion into the bottom. This gives us a black and white image, so we're going to set this to multiply. But that still overwrites the background, so we're going to use the alpha from this model into the factor input. And now we have ambient occlusion applied to the model. So if I switch to this, and then back, you can see that the shadows get deeper as we get the ambient occlusion. Now we haven't used the alpha at all, and that comes in with giving control over the individual elements of this render. So that being the model and the background independently. So the first thing we're going to add is I'm going to use RGB curves simply uh, because they're a good substitute. But you can use RGB curves or any hue saturation, brightness, contrast amendments as you see fit. The first I'm going to place is on the ambient occlusion line. This just gives the control over the depth of the shadow. So you can match the shadow to any the shadow of your model to any shadows that are in the background. The next one to add is we want to be able to control the model independent of the background. So I'm going to duplicate RGB curves. And I'm going to drop this over the image line into the alpha over. The problem here is if I change the RGB curves, you can see it affects the shadow plane too. So I'm going to take the alpha out of the, just the alpha layer and plug this into the factor. This controls between the model and the background. So we can control any color or the brightness of the model independent of the background. To control the background independently, we need to duplicate and add it after the alpha over. And now if I change this, it will affect the whole image. So I'm going to plug the alpha, the ball, into here again. And as you can see, it independently controls the ball again. So we need to add a color and invert. Now the alpha is flipped so we can control the background independently of the model. The final one I like to add is one after the final multiply as this gives a universal control over the entire scene. 
for this RGB curves, you can use, as I said, you can use hue, saturation, brightness, contrast at any point during this process to independently control and composite your model into the final render. I hope you found this video useful.